Hello. Hello. I think we're live. Are we good? Hi guys. Good morning. Happy Friday. So I uh, didn't get much sleep last night. Been up since 2.30. Got a throwing up boy. <laughs> oh my gosh. He like threw up all night. Um, well, I mean 2.30. And then I didn't go back to sleep. I don't know how many cups of coffee I've had. Five, maybe? But they're half-calf, right? So it's fine. <laughs> anyway, second night in the row where I've had no sleep. It's fine. It's fine. Hi. I hope everybody is doing well. I had a great week. Um, hello, Angela. So glad you're here. So I want to dig in about some things I've been learning about being choosing our thoughts and being choosing happy. Happiness hacks. Like, but it's like because it's not super easy, right? Not super easy to just be happy all the time. There's lots of reasons to not be happy. <laughs> So I, I just learned some hacks that I want to share with you. Um, I looked up, I found this, uh, there's this psychologist that has written this thing called the happiness project. And so he does this quiz. Let's take a quiz. <laughs> just to evaluate just how happy we are in life. Um, and he has this quiz and there's like five simple questions we can ask. And then rate, um, like answer how much you agree on a scale from one to seven. So seven being you agree the most. So are you ready? Here we go. Five questions. In most ways, my life is close to ideal. One through seven. Just quick. Don't overanalyze it. Um, two, the conditions of my life are excellent. Question three, I am satisfied in my life. Okay, so we're answering these questions on a scale from one to seven. We agree wholeheartedly is seven, and we don't agree at all is one. Uh, so number four was, so far, I've gotten the most important things in life. And number five, if I could live my life over, I would change almost nothing. All right, write your answers down. I'll, I'll, I'll say it one more time. In most ways, my life is close to ideal. Number two is the conditions on my life are excellent. Number three, I am satisfied with my life. So far, I've gotten most important things in life. And if I could live my life over, I would change almost nothing. Ooh, Angela, you're doing pretty good there. Hi, Tristan. Did you get that, this quiz? Um, go back and, and listen to all the, the questions and you can just rate yourself. This is like super simple. So the, this is how you score it. So if 15 and under, if you add them all up, you add your score up, if you're 15 and under, you need some work. You're pretty dissatisfied with your life. We got to work on that happiness factor. And uh, number 31 or higher, you're doing awesome. Like super, super happy. So cool. <laughs> what do you think? Um, I can't add up all of your numbers, you guys. So you'll have to, um, how'd you score? Type down what you scored. All right, how you doing? I wanna give you some tips so that you can maybe overcome some of these barriers so that all of them can be sevens. So the tips that, that this psychologist offers is um, the number one tip, first one, I don't know if it's like the most important, but the first one is overcome destination addiction. You're, it's like living in the not now. You're like, keep on looking for what you need in order to be happy, right? What we're going to go do. We got to get there. We got to get there kind of mindset, right? And Matthew 6, 
says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about life, what you will eat or drink or about your body or what you will, well, will wear. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Okay, so if we translate this, like when we're looking at destination, like when, when I'm able to have all of those things, when I'm able to do all of this, when I'm able, you know, when I'm, we just tend to just think about when. But God says, look at the birds of the air. Do they not sow or reap or store away in barns? And yet the heavenly father feeds them. You're much valuable, much more valuable than the birds. So hopefully that verse can help you overcome this destination addiction. Okay, tip number two, give up hopes of a perfect past. This truth that we do not need a perfect past in order for our present to be purposeful, right? So many times we get held up in the past and we can't do it because of that happened to me or or we just keep living in the past. Isaiah 43 says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and a streams in the wasteland. So first is overcome destination addiction. Second is give up the past. And then the third tip is take a vow of kindness to others and to yourself. I think this is huge. For me, it was like, for me, the big one is a vow of kindness to myself. Like be kind to myself and give myself a little bit of grace. You know, you've never been at this point in your life before. I've never been at this point in my life before. This is all new and I'm learning, right? We need to be kind to ourselves and speak to ourselves kindly. Philippians 4 says, be gentle to all. The Lord is near. When he says all, I mean, I think God means us too, right? (laughs) God wants us to be kind to ourselves. So that's just a little thing that I thought was super fun to just lead lead in with. Um, that's the happiness project, if you want to look that up further. So I understand, like, it's hard to think that how can we choose to be happy when things are so bad, when our circumstances are bad, whether, oh man, whether it's health issues or financial issues or... Um, like there's circumstances that come up against us that are bad. So lots of times we don't want to be naive, right? And say, oh, that doesn't matter. I'm going to choose to be happy, right? Don't worry, be happy. Like the landlord says the rent is late, right? And no, like we, we want reality, but we need to acknowledge that both the good and the bad can exist at the same time. The good and the bad exist at the same time. We can choose joy and happiness even when things are challenging and hard. I mean, if you look at Paul, if you look at Paul's life and scripture, Paul is the one that gives the command in Philippians 4. We're going to look at Philippians 4 a good bit today, but Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Like it's all like he has this mindset of rejoicing and and he, (laughs) he went through so many awful things in his life. If you think, think about the past that he had to overcome, he like killed Christians and then, uh, he, he was shipwrecked. <laughs> he was beaten near to death so many times. There's, there's, it's all listed out in the scripture of the things that he went through. And here he is saying rejoice. That's, that's, that's so important. We need to rejoice. And he was able to have this, this mindset where he acknowledged, yes, there's challenges, man. This is hard. But we can still rejoice. So... Here's some hacks to help us get there. Um, so the fastest, fastest and easiest way to, to get our mood to happy um, is by 
is by changing our physical state. Changing things physically will be the fastest way to change emotionally. Uh, whatever physical state you are in will affect how you respond to something. If you're feeling good and playful, your, your response you're going to respond differently than if you're in pain or in it, if you're in this lousy physical state, right? So um, there are times where I have been in a funk. Like, I don't know, my, my body's not working quite right. And um, my day has been hard and challenging with the boys fighting all the time or um, just certain things, <laughs> you know, stacking up against me. And I've just gotten in a funk. And and I've been able at times to get out of it by popping on some music and getting myself to dance. Just moving my body, right? And shifting my body to do something, even if I don't feel like it, but to get myself kind of revved up and change my mood. Another great thing, lipstick. Lipstick, right? <laughs> Lipstick can help, a pair of heels can help, a haircut, you know what I mean. <laughs> if we're in a phase of life where we just need to just physically change something so that it helps us to mentally change something or shift something. And now, if we're so tired, I want to address this too, because there have been times where I'm physically not able to, like, I could turn music on and try and dance, but... Uh, the dancing isn't going to happen because because my body is ill, right? So, um, I mean, you could turn on music and nod your head. But I've also been able to be kind to myself and learn to give myself grace and crawl into bed and read a book. And so instead of, like, instead of forcing myself to go throughout the day and get all of the things done. And then if, and then I'm having this hard time, um, in life, like physically pushing myself, right. Trying to deal with all of the things around me. Um, then I'm in this physical ugh, and I'm trying to push myself, but, and then something happens and I, with my boys and I can be kind of really irritated and snap but if I can give myself grace and say, okay, I'm going to change this and I'm going to go lay down. I'm going to allow myself to climb into bed with a book. And then if something happens with the boys and they start fighting or um, I need to go address something, I'm already kind of in this relaxed state where there's peace and I'm in a peaceful state so I can address the problem peacefully. Does that make sense? I just remember um, being in the thick of my illness and experiencing this where I was able to just go about and, and handle things because I had given myself grace and just shifted what I was making my body do. So changing your physical state, whether it be dancing, napping, reading in bed, having a snack, going outside, putting heels on, changing your clothes. Sometimes it's just getting out of sweats and putting on your favorite outfit, right? Um, here's a good here's a good tip. This is something the vet addicts use um, to help cope with their addiction, but it really just shifts. It's a mindset shift, and what they do is it's this. It's called HALT, and it's maybe you've heard of it, but you it's an acronym. HALT, H. These are the questions you ask yourself. Are you hungry? Are you angry? Are you lonely? Are you tired? So those are things that you can do physical things about. Like you can change your state of mind by just asking yourself those questions and addressing that. <clears throat> hungry, go have a good something to eat, right? If you're angry, address that and process. Like don't just go about and push push the issue aside, but address it and be able to kind of go back to why you might be angry and address it. Um, we're not going to go into all of this. I'm <laughs> just doing a quick, quick run through here. But these are great questions to ask yourself that you can actually totally after you, you can address it and change your mood 
to be happier by just taking care of these, asking yourself these simple questions and addressing the issue. Tired, lonely, angry, hungry. Those, those are things you can do something about. Um, okay, so that is the fastest way to change your mood is to do something physically. Physiology, 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 you know, physically. <laughs> okay, but that's the fastest way. Let me tell you the best way. Um, so 1 Timothy 4.8 says, For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. So let's get some scripture and start training the brain to think, think a certain way. Is there any questions? Let me just stop for a minute and ask if you guys have any questions about this stuff. Okay, I've got thumbs up. Okay, Corey, good. Corey loves that, good. All right, so thinking, I got some mind hacks for you. But focusing, our focus, like learning this stuff, it's kind of, it's a skill and you've got to train yourself and kind of get there. So this is not going to be something that happens overnight. You have to like train yourself to be happy. Okay. So, oh, I have, I have something to help you with that. Um, if you, I'm going to, I'm going to put a link here and, um, I will send out tomorrow a training, a 15 minute lesson that I made on this and oh, a fun sheet that goes with it. Uh, so I'll put a link there and it's gonna be a link to go to my website um, and there's gonna be a form just right down the page where you can put your email address in and I'm gonna send it out tomorrow. If you're already on my email list, you're gonna get it. So um, it's, it's good stuff, but it helps train your brain in this way. So if this is a skill and there's always gonna be things to focus on that are wrong, right? There's always gonna be stuff around us that's wrong to focus on. We've gotta learn how to focus on what is right. Um, okay, Philippians 4, 4, 4 through 9. This is a good one. I, I go back to this verse all the time. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, oh, Paul, <laughs> or seen in me, put in practice, and the God of peace will be with you. So uh, this is something that I believe Paul put into practice, and that's why he was able to rejoice through all the circumstances and things that he had to deal with. But the thing is, as soon as you something comes at you, as, thing as, as soon as something comes at you, you have to decide, what does this mean? And as soon as you put, once you name it, your brain will automatically look for evidence. So if something comes at you and you choose to think that it's awful, then your brain has this reticular activation system that will look for evidence to prove that everything is, is awful about this situation. Um, if you can choose to focus on something good about it, then your reticular activation system will look for evidence to prove the good things about it. The, um, yeah, and you don't quite notice the other things. Your reticular activation system will block out some of those other things and just focus on what you choose to focus on. So transformal, transformational vocabulary is um, really important at this point. So humans innately let the words they use and the words they hear change their physical and mental state. Okay, so are there habitual words 
that you use when you're uncomfortable to, and they like project you into the discomfort. Um, like you can say, or like, I'm, I'm not doing well. I know that there have been times where in my head, I, I don't feel very well. And so in my head, like, I'll just get on auto repilot. I've noticed one, one time I did this where I'm like, I'm not doing well. I'm just not doing well. And so of course my brain is going to go look to all the evidence to prove how horrible I'm doing. Right. I've caught myself doing that. I'm like, no, um, you think I'm tired. I'm fat. All of these things. Okay. Or I'm pissed off versus I'm enraged. See these vocabulary words will either like, um, catapult you <laughs> to feel further, uh, or like, oh, instead, or I'm peeved. Mm, that's a peeve. Somebody can say, mm, that's a peeve or, oh, that makes me enraged. You know, like <laughs> such a big difference could be the same circumstance, but the verbiage you use to will, will affect your emotions. Um, like this is awful we're doomed or that's inconvenient, right? Oh, I love this. Um, I was listening to Tony Robbins and he said, uh, there, there was somebody that he knew that would say, every day is a great day and the worst thing is that can happen is inconvenience. The worst thing that can happen is an inconvenience. <laughs> well, so Proverbs 16, 24 says, gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Did you catch that? Healing to the bones? Like words affect our physical state. I just, that's a whole nother lesson, but I just had to point that out. So however you're, you represent the world in, your, in words, your mind creates reality, that reality in your mind. So I just want to challenge you, what words or images do you have that magnify a certain problem in life? And what can you change to get closer to the solution? Because oftentimes if we use those, um, those dramatic or negative words, it takes us further away from a solution rather than drawing us closer to one, right? Um, so identifying those words will be really important so that when they come up, after you, you like take the time to identify them, I, I say write it down so that your brain is looking out for times that you do use them and then you'll catch yourself and you'll be able to change it. You'll be able to change it when at, and have words on hand that you wanna replace those, those habitual words that you use. Um, one word I use a lot is it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. I'm just learning. So if I mess up, <laughs> it's fine. I'm just learning. Or if, um, you know, something spills, it's fine. I could just clean it up. It's fine. Um, that's one word that I go to a lot that, that will really help me work towards a solution rather than just be miserable or not happy. Um, so, oh, I wanted to share this one story. Angie, I don't know if you're still on here, but Angie, oh yeah, I was going to share this earlier on, a lot earlier on, but I love this because um, in relation to our body and our physical state, so our physical body reacts the same to both anxiety and um, excitement. Like we have the same physical response. Um, it's the same thing that happens either way. The only thing that's different is what we're thinking. The only thing that's different is what we're thinking. So I'm like, I remember I, I texted Angela one time about something. I texted her about something and then uh, she texted back saying, oh my gosh, life is awful. I'm in the emergency room. Um, she, I don't know. She, she didn't use exactly these words, but she was saying, I'm in the emergency room. Um, she had one girl that was uh, sick and then she had a toddler who was demanding and fussy and 
not happy. So she's in this emergency room dealing with all of this. And she's like, I parked in a no parking zone. And, and then she started giggling as she was typing it to me. And she was telling me, um, and she just kind of changed her perspective. And she's like, oh my gosh, this is like, what if my car gets towed? I've got, so she's like, as she's relaying it and realizing what a good story it is, <laughs> I saw her emotions completely change. The, the, the things that were in her body that she was experiencing, uh, she, it, it shifted with just uh, a simple, a simple perspective shift. So I just, I just love that. I just love seeing that in action in that moment. Okay. So I, I want to address maybe some global, um, this is what Tony Robbins calls it global metaphors. So there's some metaphors that we will go to uh, when we are, there's metaphors that we use. And so it will affect like the picture in our mind. It will affect our thinking and our reality. So if, um, you know, like metaphors, like I'm at my, the end of my rope or um, I got stabbed in the back, those kind of metaphors then we have this image in our mind and so it becomes a reality and this is what is actually happening, right? Uh, Tony Robbins was like, mm, you're at your end of the rope. Okay, why don't you put your rope down over there and then just come take a seat. You know, <laughs> like you don't need a rope. But if you also look at like how you define, like how you describe life. If you say that life is a battle, then you're always going to be fighting, right? Like everything is life or death and everything is super serious and you're, you're, it's intense if life is a battle. If life is a test, you always have to be prepared and you're going to want to ace it. You know, you got to do everything right and there's a wrong way to do it. it. And then there's, you know, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get <laughs> or um, life is like a dance. Life is like a dance, creativity, fun, all of that sort of thing um, comes when you think maybe of it as a dance. You've got other people in the picture that you can dance with. Or if you think life is a gift, if, if you can see that and picture that, then you're going to go about, then you're gonna go about life in a whole different way. And you're going to be able to think differently and be able to experience happiness and you're going to be able to rejoice a lot easier okay so how good is it that we have a god that calls us to rejoice rejoice in the lord always i will say it again rejoice he doesn't ask us to carry the heavy load he doesn't ask us to sacrifice all of our good things he tells us that he wants us to rejoice i love that so, God bless you guys. God bless. I pray that this is encouraging to you and that uh, and it's useful. I pray that it's useful. Oh, also, I'm doing a crown and sword study. I wrote this book <laughs> that's going to help, that can totally help this. Uh, it, it's a, called Crown and Sword, Spiritual Training for Becoming a Royal Warrior. And that is... It's kind of along the same lines. It's picturing yourself as the royal warrior that God has called you to be and really making that a truth that is in your brain, um, that is something that you believe. A belief is a repeated thought and emotion that you experience. Okay, it's not just something that you know is true. It's something that you continually experience and think. So as you immerse, if you, uh, if you want to go through this curriculum, it will provoke you to get in the word and to know God and have conversations with him in a way that will help you truly believe the truth about what God has said about you, who you are and how much he loves you. Um, there's more information. I'll post the link for that too. If you want to join, we are starting Monday. We're starting Monday. So you'll want to get in, um, give me your email so that I can get you all the information. And that's it. God bless you guys. Godspeed. I love you. Have a great weekend.